All right. Welcome back once again, back again to another episode of the Feed from Geek Mountain podcast. We are your co-hosts. I'm sure you can pizza. We also got Jacuz over here as well. Yo, what's up, guys? Great. Awesome. Hello and welcome. You guys know what we talk about on, on the show. It's anime and video games in depth while also showcasing minority and disadvantaged individuals in America. Today, it's just me and Jacuz here, but it's all gravy. We haven't had a, a duo show in a while. Um, I did want to make a quick announcement that we are available now on Apple Podcasts. So that's really cool, right? Anyways, this isn't Anyways. about One Piece. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not about One Piece, but um, speaking about uh, milk and cash cows, today we're talking about games as a service today. We've been hinting this episode for quite some time. Finally, is here in full fruition. Um, so, let's talk about games as a service. Um, now, it's, now, for those who don't know, um, games as a service... As a you know, as a business model for video games, is like it's now become kind of like the forefront of many online games nowadays, or any game that has some sort of online functionality where like there's patches involved or yep. uh, balance changes need to be made, and then also microtransactions, downloadable content, things things of that nature. Um, you know, usually these games require, obviously, you know, the player to be online while playing it too sometimes. Um, but it's not all that bad, though, since it can lengthen the game's time span, or sorry, lifespan, by creating new content to further itself after development is made, enhancing right. the player's experience, providing them more ways to enjoy the game. But unfortunately, the games as a service model is a huge gamble, as we've seen as of late at the end of the day. Developers can't predict the commercial success through market transactions and DLC. That's just, that's, I mean, that's just simple enough. No one can predict the future. So why does it continue to exist today? We'll try to answer this question and then provide some stories of games that we played or seen that succeeded and failed with the games as a service model. So with that being said... Let's talk a little bit more. What really is games as a service? Uh, or we can compare it as what? What's the other one? Games as a product or something, uh, right? Oh no, I thought it was like live service, live service games. Live service games. Yeah, like uh, I guess World of Warcraft would be something like that, where it's like you pay a subscription for it, and you know that you're gonna get more content. And it's as daily games as a service, content. yeah. Yeah. This is cool. servicing these people forever. Right, right, right. And you're, you're mentioning the, what's the other thing? Yeah, games, games as a product. product. Oh, yeah, yeah, games as a product. You're buying a, a game, and you know what you're going to get out of that game because it's it's It's, it's a just full being game. Sold here, yeah. And that's it. It's a one-time purchase. That is all. And you get the game. You get everything you want. I mean, uh, games have DLC to it, which is kind of games as a service. Uh, uh, but... For those games, it's just you, you buy it one time and that's it. There's usually not very much monetization that goes along with it. Um, and if there is, it's not necessary to the game. Damn. Okay. Well, I mean, so that gave everybody like a baseline of what we're coming from. That was right. the core <laughs> of what we're coming from. Um, so any notable, you got like a notable uh, example, not a notable example, but you got any examples, games of service, being shitty, being great. Succeeding, yeah. failing. I actually, um, I, I got two. So uh, Diablo three and Rainbow Six Siege, when they were released, were, had lukewarm reception at launch, and not a lot of people really enjoyed it. But look where they are now. Rainbow Six Siege is doing exceedingly well, and I don't hear any complaints about Diablo three. I actually see people play Diablo three a lot more. Yeah, um, people don't consider Diablo three as the best Diablo. Um, no, I think Diablo not. 2 is, but there's definitely definitely a lot of people that play hardcore Diablo 3, yeah. Yeah. Rainbow Six Siege, you know, yeah. And then you have the stark Whatever. opposite of that, fucking Anthem, which launched, again, bare bones as possible. Uh, the From what I've heard from uh, players playing it, say that like the end game was not that great. The, the, the loot, which is the whole point of the game, because it's a looter shooter, wasn't that great. A lot of the stuff looked the same, and the whole focus was to get you to buy 
through microtransactions, new new frame or not frames because that's Warframe, uh, new shells, I guess. New, new like, shell. yeah, and that's like where all like the really cool frames are at. But it's like it costs so much money to, to like buy it. Like, well, who wants to spend that money on it when there's not much to the game at all? Like, like the whole like what makes Dark Souls so fun and like doing the fashion souls with it is the fact that I have a whole fucking game to play and I can just yeah. look cool while doing it. You know, and that's like a whole. That's what drew me into a lot of those games, like Destiny and stuff like that. Was that damn? I can make my character look unique, but, but yeah. And then, and then, not only that, it didn't have anything in it. The game was also buggy too. Like you can't release a game as a service and then also have it be buggy. Like buggy, it has to yeah. work. It has to be engaging. It has to be fun. Like there has to be like content to it, you know. Uh, and I feel like that's where a lot of uh, games as a service fall short is like having enough content and. My son clearly has an opinion on it as well, even though he's less than a year. <laughs> he's like, oh, ah, ah. that's his frustration being let out. Games as a service, stop it. Um, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I think because now, where's Anthem now? Like, servers are closed, oh, right? And, no, no, no. no, no, no. Servers, this, servers, servers are not closed. closed. Uh, the game might be abandoned soon because EA will be having a meeting to determine if they're shut, shutting it down or continuing development. Now, mind you, there's only 30 people working on the game since release. Since they like made this roadmap, roadmap saying like this is what we're going to do to overhaul the game. This is Anthem 2.0. There's only been 30 people working on it. 2.0. So it's like, I mean, yeah. there was like what, like six people working on No Man's Sky. So, I mean, you would think, but like, no man. I feel like No Man's Sky is easier to handle than Anthem because Anthem is on a, like a unique engine, I guess, and it's like it's graphically demanding. So I, I don't know, man, because there, there's other games that you know, I, I'm trying to give them out, and I just I can't think of one that's that, that can justify. No, no Man's Sky is way more, I say, ambitious as a project to make than Anthem. Yeah. Um, what the <laughs> fuck was Anthem? It was supposed. To, it's just a looter shooter. It's just a looter shooter. Like I couldn't tell you a single thing about the storyline. What what they're <laughs> fighting for? I just know they're fighting against each other and like whatever life forms are on this planet. Uh, and you know what's the kicker about this is that a lot of these live service games or not live service, excuse me, games as a service are like, yeah, bro, game's gonna be it's gonna be ten years. You're gonna be playing this. This is the next WoW. Ten You're gonna be playing years. This. Like. <laughs> And it's it look at how last look how long Anthem lasts. It came out last year, right? Twenty uh, twenty or yeah, or oh, was it the year before that? I think it was no, year before. I think it came a good minute ago. Yeah, a good minute ago. Look, you, you ain't do enough research. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hold on. Last year did run together, so I I, I literally oh, think that last God. year is twenty nineteen. Not you know, but but yeah, man. Um, oh my God, twenty nineteen. Early 2019. What are what are what are some games that you that you got? So, um, what I wanted to talk about was how typically competitive games are actually usually left out of the conversation of games as a service. Basically, um, a lot of competitive games are um, like League of Legends, Overwatch, League of Legends, Overwatch, Tekken, Dead by Daylight, Street Fighter. You could just you could just ramble oh, well, off a say, bunch. Would, would you say Tekken is kind of a games as a service because they be selling like character packs and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. They're not, but they're not. Oh yeah, but they're not bad. It's not. I I gotta remember that games and service is not inherently just a bad thing. Like it it's really not depends a on bad. It yeah, it's not a bad thing. It's just a gamble. Yeah. Um. But competitive games require the games and service model because they need multiple updates to repair bugs, uh, glitches over time, uh, balancing the game in general. Adding Basically, more content. And yeah, adding more content too <laughs> as well. That's, that's the main um, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh but of course ba I mean balancing the game and repairing bugs from uh the balance changes is huge. Um uh, while while that's important, it's also important to put forth, you know, effort into like QA testing. Like you have to fucking test your game. Yeah, of course, definitely. duh. Like who, players cannot be beta testers. We cannot be beta testers if the game is in full launch. 
especially if you can pre-order that shit i'm expecting if i'm pre-ordering a game i'm expecting to get a game that is complete because if it's not release a demo and that's another thing too like release a demo for the game they they didn't release that cyberpunk demo yeah like yeah yeah because they want to keep everything under wraps and what and whatever it was really stupid but um that's why you see games like uh resident evil series like uh succeed more often because they also put out they put out demos for their games a lot they want yeah, feedback from the from the players because they respect their players what's cool about the recent and this is just a little because i'm a re head um what's fun about the uh the demos is that the, recently with the resident evil 7 and resident evil 8 demo you just play from the perspective of a character that's in that story already and you're yeah. not necessarily as yeah, the main character and you're just going through it and it's just like to show you like the atmosphere and stuff i love that man because that resident evil 7 demo bro i played through that like so many times um but but yeah i haven't tried resident evil 8 yet because uh i don't know i don't think my computer can handle it oh my god so like for example just recently uh dead by daylight just had a huge like update to overhaul their entire like hud system so the whole ui looks totally different in game not totally different but it's it's been cleaned up but and then also they also changed like some of the survivor running they call it locomotion um but they're like running and walking animations to look more lifelike i guess or more realistic realistic. i guess (laughs) i don't i don't really know but in doing so there was a lot of bugs and glitches that came from it a lot of uh, their hitboxes a lot of survivors hitboxes became a little bit bigger Oh, so you can clip too. them from a distance? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been... When I was playing Killer, I was like, oh, I wasn't supposed to hit that. I'll take it, though. I'll <laughs> definitely take it. <laughs> um, yeah, then I saw one of my homies was playing, too, and he really clipped somebody from, like, over a window. I was like, damn. Like, he, it looked like his whole hand just went through the window, and then he, like, gum gum rocket, like, whoosh. <laughs> bam just stuck that boy i was like damn that's not supposed to happen not supposed to happen um it's like you know although the the hud is better and they're they have better walking animations still bug the hitboxes came with the update which is ridiculous leaving survivors at a disadvantage where killers are having a fucking party nowadays because they're like hell yeah man killers is back baby update 4.5 hell yeah you know um (laughs) <laughs> they gotta fix that soon <laughs> yeah exactly so uh so back to competitive games game balance is just as important as well mm-hmm. uh, when more people play the game more unknown strategies come out right and mechanics right. come out to light you'll see like reddit posts like oh yeah guys found out a way to do this uh easy fifty thousand billion dollars on grand theft auto let's do it you know and like that one mission, I don't know if anybody remembers Grand Theft Auto when it first, uh, online, when it first came to light, but that one mission where you still crack from the one guy, and you just drive right, you still crack from these Mexicans, they were Mexicans, you drive, you get cracked <laughs> from these Mexicans, you still they crack, kill them, and then you just go back, like, around, you literally went around the block, and they gave you, like, buku stacks for that mission, they gave you so much money, so people were running this mission back to back, becoming billionaires, getting, like, the best penthouses in like the first hour of the game um Good time. so shit like that has to be balanced um in regard well i mean it's not competitive but i mean in regards to like other more competitive games like tekken like you can make a, a generally low lower tiered character become a god just with the right knowledge so game balance is important to the games as a service model in regards to uh competitive games and that in that regard um what else you got um dang are we just like talking about just like games as a service like our experience with yeah, games some, uh, just some examples right. yeah okay well um i already brought this up but uh <laughs> well i didn't already bring it up but i didn't talk about destiny destiny again now destiny is a game that has issues at its core at yeah, its core but like the gameplay mechanics is already structurally fucking flawed with all the RNG loot and whatever. Now, but... I, I would say gameplay overall plays plays great. L- love how it plays. It's a it's a bungee game. Halo. If you played Halo before, you you feel it. It's it's a fun looter shooter to play. Like when you're killing things and you feel the impact stuff. That's fun. Now outside of that, this game was supposed to be ten years old. 
Destiny 2 came out in 2017. Destiny 1 came out in 2014. Um, it, it, they promised that the content from the game will carry over into the next game only to take that away from us. <laughs> They promised that. <laughs> they promised that at the beginning, bro, that it was going to be a 10-year game where content will carry over why, just like, like, like some kind of War of Warcraft kind of thing. Why? Because it happened so long ago before people were actually taking action against companies like, you know, the CDPR uh, a fiasco right now. Like, bro, I'm telling you, I say this all the time. I think it's just pent-up aggression from, like, EA and Ubisoft and 2K fucking people over. The people finally just had, like, it was like, I had enough pretty much but that's, um that's good though we need to put the power yeah. back into the gamers hands really exactly because they're getting very scummy with these like microtransactions and like even it's gambling bro it's gambling but but yeah. going back to destiny um how they got rid of all the content is like you, it happens between destiny the events after destiny one the events before destiny Ooh. two take place the tower where you keep all your loot was destroyed and that's how people found out like oh so your stuff isn't going to carry over and not only that, when I when Destiny Two came out, it was even more bare bones than the first game when it launched. Like it had nothing. Like even like the 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 PvP which I got to play, when you first get it, it's it, it used to be randomized. Like you didn't get to choose like Team Deathmatch or uh, Hold the Point or, or Hard Point or anything like that. It would just randomize it for you and choose, and then it made it like four play. It, it just they made the game worse than what it was. And it's like I yeah. I would have rather stuck with Destiny One since I already had all the content for it, three raids and stuff. And then the fact that you release a game and the main thing is the end content, that's the main emphasis of these looter shooters, and that's not even available until a week afterwards. Like, it's just, it's like really, it's just lazy, <laughs> honestly. That is so ridiculous. I, yeah, I'm not a, I'm not a Destiny 2 uh, fan at all. Um, are, aren't they, are the DLCs, like, you got to pay for the DLCs for the extra content? Yeah, you have to pay for the DLCs. And you, and, but the and game like, itself is free. Well, now that's where they're now, at now it's free. destiny 2 <laughs> destiny 2 in a release bro you bought that game and the dlc you spent 120 dollars only for them to release it as free and now they had they do have like another content pack which i guess is more i don't know if it's more dlc packs i don't really follow destiny 2 but they like because i know there's a way that you can still buy destiny but it's like it's whatever the first game the initial original game was plus dlcs and now they got they added on more dlcs but even playing that people knew that watching the trailers that this is that the Mars mission was cut out of the base game and made DLC because in the launch trailers, it's there, but when you're playing a game, it's no longer there. And it's like, uh -uh. What, are, what are we really doing? Are we really like locking content on a disc again? Is this Marvel's Capcom 3? That is truly to touch base on um, r really the, the issue here is, uh, is with sequels. Sequels to content on both the games as a product and games as, as a service model is both huge on both sides. We see sequels all the time. Um, mm -hmm. But it's arguably worse for the games as a service model, and specifically. Um, now, sequels, what are sequels supposed to do to games? They, they're they supposed to, you know, create... Ex Improve. Bigger, yeah, bigger universes, complete stories to at least provide more clarity, and then improve from the from the, the first game. game on gameplay but mechanics not, story everything everything but that's never always the case it's never always the case prime example big example that anybody could think of call of duty call of duty tons of tons of games tons of games every single year there's a new call of duty every single year it feels like a yeah definitely no, there is. Every single year is a new Call of Duty. Okay. That's, we got started with uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Black Ops, Modern Warfare 3, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3. Oh, uh, yeah. Advanced I don't Warfare. know where it went from there. Yeah, Advanced Warfare. Like... <laughs> Yeah, there's Dude, a new one every single year. There's a new one every single year. Um, and, although and it's an indirect sequel, it's not like a some. I mean, they're not always like a legitimate sequel, but I mean, obviously they go in order in terms of the the game. Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare Two, oh. Mo, uh, Black Ops One, Black Ops Two, Black Ops Three. You know, shit like that. Um, but what this ends up doing is it ends up splitting the player base into yeah. the have-its and the have-nots. 
people who enjoy my offer too like we did we we aren't gonna go to black ops as easily or we will oh, but then not. realize <laughs> that black ops is totally different than my warfare too so Dang, a lot I of people even, I even think about that that's crazy yeah so a lot of people are unable to keep up with the y- the yearly purchases or just just enjoy the previous year's game basically and on top um, of that with the yearly mm-hmm. purchases you're spending 120 dollars if you want to play the more, dlcs mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's it's spending like more they're, money you're really finessing people bro <laughs> yeah i mean but that's that's what call of duty is doing it's basically kind of they set themselves nowadays to a point where it's like hey if you know my friends are going to play call of duty advanced warfare 29 billion um i gotta get advanced warfare 29 advanced warfare 29 billion as well i mean like because my friends are playing it I, why am i playing my warfare one still it makes no sense like i, just, I gotta play with them yeah. That's definitely the trappings because I feel like we fell off with Modern Warfare Two because we didn't go on to the next game. We didn't, you know, and then like everyone. Kinda yeah, and then look at my <laughs> look at my Warfare Two nowadays. Like, um, there was what there wasn't there supposed to be like a promise like remake or something. Uh, did it already come uh, out? I think they did an HD release, but not of the multiplayer. It was just a single player campaign, mm. which is like, oh, you don't want to give us that multiplayer because if they gave us that HD multiplayer. Today, I, I promise you, nobody would be playing. Oh my new god, shit. nobody would be playing nobody new shit at all. And of course, yeah, like now, like I think the the Modern Warfare Two servers are still running on like what three sixty and yeah, PS three, but like l- the servers they've been overran with hackers, modded lobbies, and they just kind of left the game to just focus on like the next big one, basically. So there's no point in playing older titles like that in this regard then games the games of service model fails for call of duty players um and then, as well didn't one release is just multiplayer only and it's like you're gonna release it as multiplayer only don't don't charge 60 dollars i feel exactly. like they, for one of them they left out a campaign and it's like if you're gonna charge 60 dollars i better come with like all the the content you're gonna <laughs> add on for multiplayer afterwards because like what am i paying 60 dollars for just to play the this play like, yeah that doesn't make any sense they have some pretty good campaigns, so it's like for them to just yeah. go start multiplayer. They see like all oh, these micro trans micro transactions, bro. That's that's, that's, where, that's, where, the, where, the that's where the money is. That's where the money is. Uh, right now, we're seeing a similar issue with Warzone fans and Cold War because what? simply, yeah, a lot of people enjoy Warzone. Although Warzone is a kind of like a su- private entity from. Modern Warfare 2020? Yeah, but 2019? It, was, it, was re- it was originally released with it, though. And then they were like, all right, we will make this FTP. Yeah, and but now it's like considered, it's, now it's a separate game that you can download by itself now. Yeah. Warzone. Um, now, so now there's an even bigger divide between Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 and Warzone players and Cold War. And they all have their own issues of balance. They all have their own issues of glitches, of hackers. And these are two pretty these are two totally different developers working on the game, although they still share the Call of Duty name. Fan base. That and the fan base, yes. And they're just dividing them. And it's like, what could a Call of Duty game be if like they work on it for two or three years and make it like you know, really go games as a service and and what is the game that. every year? It's the same thing essentially. Oh, yeah. it's, it's the a, same it's... thing. You got your perks, you got kill streaks. You, you got, got the weapon. mechanics. Got the mechanics are generally the same. Yeah, you got your weapons, the guns. Um, now the gun. I think the guns really uh, like the the customization of the attachments are really good. I think uh, nowadays, but I mean, other than that, the core gameplay like you run, you shoot. You use kill streaks. You use your like very minor tweaks. It kind of reminds me. Of, I wouldn't say it's as bad as NBA 2K, but like NBA 2K, it's as bad they, as NBA 2K. All they yeah. change in that is the controls. <laughs> it's like, I why they change the draft. The draft. Well, I mean, yeah, they'll update the roster for the draft, but yeah. it's like you can easily create one 2K game and then upload all this stuff as a live service and pay it's for the, seasons. The repackage model. Repackage. And everyone, like, eat, a lot of YouTubers who stream NBA 2K21, they're walking away from the game. They're, like, not even playing it anymore because it's, like, 
it's essentially a broken game and like it just has a lot of fugazi mechanics uh things that they didn't work on things that they should have improved and it's like they gave you like they 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 advertise like oh the park system is going to be like this whole city and stuff like that but really it's not it's like very similar yeah, to like, i think my, to the- i was watching my homie play and I think he was saying that you can buy your level or you could buy like yeah. your stats up until a yeah. certain point and you have to mm-hmm. train it. But until then you had to sit at the park playing random people at the park, shooting hoops and shit. I think there is like a pay to win mechanic with it where you can increase your overall rank by paying for it with VC, but VC is like super expensive in itself. And it's like the things that were in the game that they should have focused on was when they had a story mode. Now, mind you, it was very meme it was very memeable because like the voice acting and stuff was terrible. It's 2k. Like, I mean, it's not, I can't say it's 2k cause 2k did make like a Bioshock game, but, <laughs> um, or I don't think they made it, but anyways, um, they could have built off of that, yeah. but they cut that out. I feel like, but <sighs> yeah, I don't know. And then people are just going to continue to buy the shit. Madden also bad release, broken game. Like just a whole bunch of bonkers shit you can do in there apparently. Uh, and people are just, they're going to keep on buying it, even though, like, I think on Metacritic, the score for it is, like, a three or even below below that. Um, that is so much for it. It's repackaged games uh, like yeah. these, NBA, Call of Duty, that people just are forced to keep playing because at this point it's become so ingrained in our culture that, oh, if one of my friends is getting it, his friend is going to get it. Our whole circle of friends are going to get it. If I don't have this game, I'm going to be left out of the and loop. FOMO, yeah, FOMO sits in. And it's like, I have to, I have to get this now. And then uh, along with that, it's the same repackaged game. They've also found like assets from past games in these games, like Madden 2020 or the new Madden had signs for Madden 20 advertising Madden 20. <laughs> and then same thing with Fallout 76, Fallout 76 just, uh, oh my God. they were used a lot, a lot of assets, bro. Like, um, people found like in the code like stuff from like Dragon from like uh 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 fucking what was it Skyrim the Dragon Age or oh, is Dragon. it Skyrim yeah Skyrim Skyrim um they found like Dragon stuff like Dragon text related to it it's like why is this even in the game like why <laughs> dragons are we- and Fallout ooh yeah. let me know it, well, they're not in it but it was just like in the <laughs> in the, like the code and stuff like that like, why, is this, why is this text from a game that came out in 2013 in a game and came out in 2019 and then last thing and this is the main thing. How are you selling hair models that are free in Fallout 4? How, how are you selling those same hair models, like selling it to players for like real money? Like that's they, just... they wanna they wanna recreate their character in Fallout 4. Well, you gotta give me five dollars for this haircut. That's real life. That's real life. That's real life. <laughs> Except this one is permanent. You get to keep this haircut. Oh my god. That's crazy. Um, um one thing I want to touch on um to bring back uh competitive games i know in league of legends real fast uh there was so league of legends if y'all know about league of legends you know y'all should know about league of legends but there's one character named trinomir uh, i don't know if you uh, i don't know how much experience you had with league of legends yet jacuz i got a couple hours i don't think i've ran into a whatever you just said her name was Tremere. Oh, Tridomir. 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 Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it. I, I, I call him Tridomir. Um, so he's uh, so his ultimate ability is to temporarily be able to temporarily uh, be un or wait this is, I'm borking this up to be temporarily unable to take fatal damage. So he he can be at one HP and someone hits him, and then he won't die while using his ultimate ability. Um, I forgot what it was called, anyway. So, that was his ability, right? Despite this, there was another item um, called Blade of the Ruin King, where, you know, you would, it would just, you would just sap away, like, 3% of someone's HP, and you would gain it um, right. as well. So... Back then, there was this there was this weird glitch where if you use Blade of the Ruined King on Tridomir, he would die during his ultimate. Very, it was very niche. Only like only so many characters can like use this tactic, but still, it was super niche. And you never really knew if you were playing against them until like you were playing against them. So. <laughs> 
I abused this motherfucker like all the time when I heard about this shit. I was like, oh, I'm trying to fucking use it. The thing is, games as a product couldn't fix something like this, you know? Yeah. If if you gave us a fully fledged online multiplayer game, it wouldn't be able to. Like the developers are like, all right, well, we'll fix that in League of Legends too, you know? But that's not the case because people, I mean, a lot of people playing League of Legends. So, I mean, it was patched, like, afterwards, unfortunately. Um, what, you know, what, unfortunately, bro. <laughs> man, because I didn't I ain't play that, man. So, I was just like, man, I want to abuse this shit. Yo, that shit was dirty as hell, though, man. I was, oh. Ooh. But I just, it just goes back to, like, how game balance is really important. Fixing bugs is really important as the game's as, as a service model. There's a failure of QA testing, but there's also an issue of just balance and bugs need to be repaired. That's why games of service needs to, it needs to be better. It needs to be more utilized as to repair bugs, repair glitches instead of DLC, microtransactions, uh, hair from previous games. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're gonna release a game in like a buggy state too, it's like, bro, at least focus on like getting the game to uh, a certain standard, you know? Yeah. Where- playable without those like noticeable distractions i feel like fortnite I mean, did a pretty good job with uh with their I mean, service model yeah uh, they yeah um, Look, yeah they, they wrote kids in to buy cosmetics uh, but it doesn't really affect the gameplay and like it, yeah it doesn't affect the gameplay uh there was um some was, there was at one point loot boxes in the save the world um oh yeah they, but they got rid of that didn't they yeah they got rid of that because they're, they're about to get, hit a huge fine. Plus, I mean, Fortnite isn't totally left out of the conversation, I guess, too, because they also... There's been some scummy tactics by the developers and forcing their employees to work overtime and and basically CDPR type shit. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Fortnite is a solid game. It's a solid it game. Yeah. It like, and, lit, yeah. Go on, my bad. I, I just cut you Shit. off. No, I was just saying it's, it's a solid game. It, it works. Yeah, and then like um, the the micro all the for, time like, for skins and stuff like that is like isn't it leading into like storylines now, like in the game? Yeah, like, like there's like, a battle pass. Yeah, if you I think if you save if if you don't buy like a battle pass, I think if you complete the battle pass for like for the the free one, then you could buy the actual battle pass. At, by the the end of it, I think. Yeah, uh, I think that was what the the thing was like. Oh, like I don't have enough money to buy the battle pass. Well, just play the game and complete it, which will take fucking forever. But at that point, if you, I mean, if you love the game, you get the whole battle pass for free, and you get all the characters and all the crazy skins, yeah. basically. But isn't the issue with the battle pass that uh, every season you, you you no longer get stuff from prior seasons, which is no like, longer. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of pressuring people into like playing the game it makes complete. people yeah it makes i mean it makes people to play the game but that's only if you care about the skins which yeah. don't do anything cosmetically for the game well yeah it doesn't affect the game like gameplay at all it just you you look like john but, wick now yeah but yeah you don't play you don't play like john wick <laughs> unless you want to run around with the default character but who wants to run around with the default characters nobody no <laughs> i'm raising my hand uh only because i don't I don't be buying cosmetics like that. <laughs> oh my god! Did you have anything else? Or oh, like yeah, one yeah. more game? So, no, nah, like one more like little topic, right? So, um, so so it's a little, little 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 read real quick. So, um, pretty much this guy was talking about how games as a service is a fraud, and I'm gonna read this little description, um, about like what what he was talking about. So, under several laws in many countries and continents, a game sold as FTP free to play with microtransactions is sort of considered to be selling goods, not services. Uh, regardless of what the EULA says, <clears throat> the actual governmental law defines that goods need to be usable at any point after purchase and software as a good does not belong to who, to the one who purchased the product. Right? So Ross's argument <laughs> is that games as a service is not a service, but acts as one in order to be able to shut down games after they start being unprofitable. He only requests that companies give players a reasonable way to play games after the servers are shut down. And one game that came to mind was like Maple Story 2. Like that recently shut down. And no, I know it was a recent. That, that was a year ago. 
Oh yeah, it was a year ago. I keep forgetting about this damn pandemic. <laughs> but it's it shut down a year ago, and it was it was definitely a a, a, a games as a service, definitely right. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was an online multiplayer game that so, I like, frequently. I thought that was something interesting too to like take a note, like how you say it's a gamble. It really is because it's like you can invest in this game and invest, 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 and the server shut down. You you don't have access to it anymore. You, you don't have access to the game. game. Yeah, and that's then, true. And then there's another game like uh, Star Citizen for example is the is the craziest games of the service because that's the one where you can it's a it's the it's that uh kickstarter game that still hasn't released over 13 years um and you can buy ships on it and stuff like that and people have spent like hundreds of thousands of dollars on this game already and it's like not even ready it is 13 that's another one that's like really bad it's like like (sighs) but again at the end of the day it's actually us as players that are in that are empowering this yeah you keep yeah, buying games, you yeah keep we buying keep buying brands, mm-hmm. they're gonna keep doing the same stuff and it's just it, it just shows how like now it's just been so ingrained in our culture now like oh now i have to buy i have to like you know back then it was just like you know you would unlock shit you would do cheat codes right whatever yeah. now it's like oh oh man like my friends got skins my friend got that new update for Destiny 2. He got the new DLCs. Like, bro, man, I gotta, I gotta get it too, I guess, or I don't, I yeah. want to be left out. And that's another thing. It, 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 like games as a service too. The one concept I don't like is that it, it blocks your progression essentially. Like, yeah. and then with what you just said, if I don't get the DLC, but you got it, we can't play together anymore. We can't play together. No. Nope. And it's especially. Like, it, and no, it goes on. also, yeah, it goes to show that like even if the servers are closed, uh, even before that, we can't play the game unless we update it. Right. And, it, and if we don't like the update, it's kind of too bad. So sad. You can't play the game because we don't. At the end of the day, we don't own any games that we play with the games as a service model. We don't own any oh. games. And so you're we, like, all hey. we own is just like a renters just the in like in the clear like the simplest layman's terms we're basically renting a game for a full price to play until the developers say no yeah pretty much because all these games like they they have a besides wow i guess <laughs> they have an end date at some point like they're just gonna die out i feel like i mean unless you're like final fantasy what what was that 14 it was an online one that like was terrible, but then they revamped it, and now it's like pretty successful, and it's on a subscription model too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's but that's like, the biggest gamble with playing these games that you can put so much money into it, and then the reward is oh, you got slapped. Like I feel bad for any Anthem player that bought DLC or anything like, like that. Like, uh, Fantasy Star Online One, those servers are still going strong. They're yeah. still online. Maple Story, base Maple Story still online still going strong now maple story 2 is only available now in korea yeah but that's the price we had to pay because it was it just was not it wasn't profitable it wasn't profitable anymore simply because all the mistakes that they were they were making which we said many times way earlier episodes ago (laughs) (laughs) so go back and listen to like the first like what the first two two or three uh episodes we talked about jrpgs and jojo we talked about maple story a lot um yeah. now this is really I, sad I, yeah that, that thread was so I, funny i played that oh yeah the thread where he was like i can't log in is that my log- <laughs> <laughs> so i was like did you wake up from a coma oh my god that thread was, yo, I, I was, I think I woke my son up this morning because I started dying laughing at the computer because I was like, I just couldn't, it was one of those laughters where you just couldn't contain it. Um, but context, someone tried to log in, someone on Reddit posted a day ago on a MapleStory blog or a Reddit post or Reddit saying like, oh, I can't log in. Is is there something wrong with the game? And he was like, like, am I banned? Am I, like, like, yeah. Am I banned? It was like, yeah, you're banned, bro. Like, the best comment though is, do you want to tell him or, or should I? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was yeah. terrible. That was terrible. So well, I at think, the end of the day, yeah. last question: Are games as a service good or bad? 
and that is subjective to the game i guess yeah i guess that it is yeah it, it really does depend on the game i think i think it's good but also we can't we can't be pressure we have to get it we have to remove the stigma or like this yeah the stigma around pressuring gamers that they need to buy dlc market transactions there's just we should bring back the ways of the days where you could be that you can unlock these things day uh day one day two just from playing the game yeah absolutely and don't make it like and then if you have that in your game and you have the ability to purchase don't make it a don't make it a grind like warframe bruh you have to like it's 60 dollars to buy some of them frames and they put it in there that way because like in the game you can still you can still get the frame. You just got to put like some hours into it, bro. And like, uh, that's just too much. Oh, we even mentioned fucking Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Now that I think about it, um, their gem system. Oh my god, the gem system. You remember the gem system? I don't know. Yeah, did, did it, broke, you ever play? it broke the game. Yeah, you can, I mean, like, it did like break the game, but yeah, it broke know, it the game because you have to pay for it. It made your character powerful too, bro. Like you got, like on broken. top of that, yo, 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 you can, okay, so you can buy gems that could, like, increase your damage, increase your combo damage. You but get gems that heal you, too. You get gems that heal you, dude, you get gems that decrease the damage onto yourself, increasing your defense, but on top of that, they had exclusive gems based on where you pre-order the game from. So oh, they were yeah. already banking on this gem system before the game actually released. Like, oh yeah, you get oh if you get it from GameStop, you get these gems. If you get it from Amazon, you get these gems. You get it from Funko Land, you know, you get those gems. Oh, that's Bro, a like, hey, that that's just showing your age. <laughs> Funko, Funko Land. Oh, okay, it it was a Funko. I'm 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 the real. I'm but the real, yeah, like, basically, why? yeah, yeah, that did that did kind of did show my age. Funko Land. Um. That was a place, bro. Like Toys R Us, like all these different places where you could like pre-order the game and you get these limited exclusive gems. And then once uh, once the game did come out, people reverse engineered the game to find in the source code all these other characters that they can unlock that we had to pay for, but they were already on the disc. They were on yeah. the disc. And you have the fucking oh my god! They did not learn their lesson from Marvel Marvel's Capcom Three, apparently, because didn't that same thing happen with Marvel's Capcom Three, where characters are like already on the disc, and then yeah, yeah, there were like two characters though. They only had two characters at the time, so it was just kind of like, man, it's like yeah, yeah, Yeah. that's really unfortunate. So I mean, yeah, I think that we need to bring back full fledged games have everything on the disc yeah and and people like Bring players also need to learn how to be paid like i feel like we waited back in the day years for games bro like kingdom hearts 2 felt like it was a while before i got that you know what i mean and when i got it that shit perfect to me at least but but yeah, man, bring that model back where it's like, it's okay to take time to develop a game, but it's like everyone wants like these execs, they want their money now because they're making millions of dollars while these developers are making like <laughs> school teacher money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, definitely, I, I agree with that. Like, can we just get completed like games? Like Final Fantasy VII, like you said. Yeah. That was, that was a breath it's of fresh air. It's a full game, but it's the first part, so we still got to pay $60 for the next part. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, Star Wars, oh, Star Wars The Fallen Order was like that, too. I had a good time with that. That was a full game, and that was it. And they gave you free DLC. Like, they were like, oh, here's these lightsabers, here's these skins. Look like Still free character. DLC, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it wasn't like, I didn't have to pay into anything. I got the game. You had to pay into there. it. Yeah, we don't have well, to pay into Cyberpunk 2077. It's a full game. Oh, but that, but that but... is... <laughs> There's more that goes. It, it's not just games as a service. The game is just like it was just broken. Like, why would you do that? Because people are bank. They're banking on this core product that yeah. would do them. That would sell all this money. But well, they're banking on marketing, bro. Which marketing oh, yeah, the marketing. The marketing they, did work. They did. They, they people they got their records. money. <laughs> they broke records, but uh, those glitches though. Those glitches though. It just and the lies, the and deceit. Now, optimization there's a whole a whole mess of shit and, whole mess and of shit them, them poor workers under anyone that's like 
a manager or or C level exec making decisions for where the company is going. Any visionary. Yo, hire me as a QA tester because apparently they ain't doing shit over at CDPR. <laughs> apparently they ain't doing shit. I looked at the credits. I was like, oh, all these QA testers. Man, y'all might as well delete all well, no, social media. Y'all got. I don't think it was their fault. It was it was the uh, the higher ups like, oh, this should work on Xbox, uh, this should or, work. Uh, ser- Series X and PS5 and PC. Oh, ship it. Ship it. What? <laughs> it only like, does. Can you? Can I walk around and shoot people? Yes. All right. It's finished. Easy. Cool. We're good. And it's like because you were. It was like a exact who said like, oh, the game played well when I played it. It's like, what'd you play hey. it on? <laughs> Hopefully it's a little PC. All, like, yeah, he played on PC. <laughs> He was probably walking around indoors where the game is like not oh stressing out your, your He's walking system. indoors like, oh yeah, I can move in this like I can move around in circles. Fair, okay. Ship it. I had this man in a box in V's oh room and the game's running perfectly fine. He's like, what is 60 FPS at 4K? Oh my god. Terrible people. All right, well, I mean, okay, yeah, we can go on about Cyberpunk forever. Um but yeah, that was that was the episode today, everybody. Um maybe we might have an update to this episode, see what what other games as a service this year came out and failed or succeeded but um that's pretty much it for today uh yeah so where can people find you jacuz uh you can find me on instagram just go follow my instagram page i say this every single time but it's very it's it, you have to spell it out j period a period c period two u's periods between those with a z no period and that's how you'll find me you can easily find me on sure you can's page as well or the feed from geek mountains page yeah uh, but yeah and and you streaming I, i'm trying to man the last time i streamed i realized that my um mic I, I turned down the audio on my mic so i was pretty much like whispering the entire time <laughs> so i had to delete the entire like hour clip i was like that's so that's so messed up but yeah i'm trying to stream you can find me at jacuz with three three u's one z um on twitch uh but yeah i mean i wouldn't go there now but we we trying to get a consistent stream going. I wouldn't go there now. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just come out streaming consistently. Like you know, I, I would check in every day, just to be like, oh, did he stream yet? I'm typically streaming streaming around like uh, 10, 10 p.m. CST or uh, PST because that's when everybody sleeps. That's when the house is quiet, and I can I can fuck around with the fuck arounds. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> you, you, know around, you know what happens when people fuck around with the fuck arounds? You don't do that. You don't. <laughs> you don't fuck around with the fuck around. Um, yeah, y'all can find me at Sure You Can Pizza on Twitch, uh, as well as Instagram. And as always, how else do y'all listen to the podcast? Y'all can find us on Spotify, Anger.fm, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts right now. Oh, we rich now. We rich. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but that was about it. We want everything like hot sauce, like blue satire once said. But that's it for us for today. So we'll see you guys next time on the mountain. The Geek the Mountain. The Geek Mountain. All right, sweet. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> You're super late on that one. You're like, waiting for me to finish. You I just started. There's latency. No, but you, yeah, I know. And you usually.